Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. So you definitely read that title right on YouTube. Today we are engraving metal with the Cricut Explore Air 2. This will work in any Explore machine as well as any Maker machine, but the tool I'm going to use today can be used in the Explore machines. Now let's talk a little bit about the tool. The tool is an engraving tool and it says it can be used in the Explore or the Maker. I've only used it in my Explore, first of all. Second of all, the tool is not made by Cricut. So you do run the risk of voiding your warranty on your machine if you use this tool. Now, my machine is an older machine, so I'm really not worried about it. So I'm gonna dive in, start engraving with my Cricut Explore and see what happens. So this may fall under one of my most requested videos. I've been asked hundreds and hundreds of times if you can engrave metal with the Cricut Explore machine. And I finally found the tool to do that. So last week I was on the Because We Make podcast. I would encourage you to head on over there and check that out. I'll leave a link to their podcast below. And as we were chatting, they mentioned a tool that would engrave with, they were using it on the Maker, but when I looked at it, it said it could be used on the Explore. And I've been looking for a good tool recommendation for the Explore just to try metal engraving for like months and months now. So I finally had a really good recommendation and I could get the tool off of Amazon, wasn't expensive at all, and give it a try in my Explore machine. And guess what? It worked. So I'm gonna to link to the tool below and you can use it in your Explore. But if you have the engraving tool for the Maker already, maybe you've already tried some of our other metal engraving tutorials, then by all means you can use that for this tutorial as well. Because we are gonna be engraving metal Christmas ornaments today. So if you want to make some Christmas ornaments, cute metal ornaments engraved with the child's name, this is the perfect way to do that. You could also engrave things like baby's first Christmas or a couple's first Christmas together, that type of thing. You can engrave whatever you want on these ornaments, just as long as you can put the text into design space. So let's take a look at the supplies we're gonna use. So once again, I'm gonna use my Explorer 2 and this tool will go in any Explorer machine. Looks something like this, comes with a little cap that goes in the end. You will need to remove that to use it. And then it also comes with a brief instruction sheet on settings to use with your Cricut machine. Now I did want to do this video because I've had tons of questions about engraving metal with the Explore. So I wanted to do this, do this one with my Explore. However, if you have the engraving tip, the quick swap housing for the maker, you can do the same project with that tool and machine that you already have. So don't think you have to go out and specifically get this tool and the Explore to do this project. Now I'm going to be making two different Christmas ornaments. I'm going to do this gingerbread man and these stockings and I will link to everything below. You also need a stamp enamel marker, strong grip mat, and I'm gonna use the strong grip transfer tape hack to keep my blanks from moving around. And I used that on my last video and we'll just do kind of a refresher on that. And then I did wanna point out that they do also have this little multi-pack of charms. They're a little bit smaller, would be for like a smaller tree maybe, or wine glasses or something like that. But again, you could engrave these with your Cricut machine. So just another option. I'm not gonna actually use these today, but you could definitely order those as well. Remember, all the supplies will be linked in the description below. If you are on computer, click show more. If you're on mobile, you can click an arrow to expand the description, or a lot of times you need to swipe up depending on how you're watching. So let's take a look in design space at the designs we're gonna use for this project. So first you'll wanna get your names into Cricut Design Space. So first we're gonna talk about if you're doing this with an Explore machine like I'm demonstrating today. If you're doing it with your Explore, I would suggest a skinny font. Why is that? Because we're gonna tricking the machine basically, we have to use a cut operation. The Explore does not have an engrave operation and these other like the pen, the foil, the score won't work as well. So we're gonna need to do the cut. So I would suggest doing the cut operation, picking a skinny font. Now, if you are doing this with a maker machine, you can pick an engrave operation and you can actually pick a writing style for your font. And to find a writing font, I usually go here, I filter these out and I click writing here. So I know that I'm getting all writing fonts that would be a single line. So that's how I would do that if I was using my maker. Since I'm using my Explore, I'm gonna use a cut operation because that's what the tool manufacturer recommends for the tool to work properly. I'm gonna use two different blanks for my ornaments. One, the word can be about one inches wide. The other is about a half an inch wide. So what I did is I put the names I'm going to use into design space. 
And then the one that was the longest, I picked it and I made it a font size of 43. And then made, I made all three of these a font size of 43. Why did I do that? So for instance, this name is shorter than the other two. If I was to pull this out to about one inches wide, it would be way bigger and look funny against the other two. But if I make them all the same font size, then all of a sudden they all would look the same and they would look good as a set. So I did the same thing with the half inch names, picked the longest one, chose that font size, and made the other two the same font size. Now I'm gonna use the same font for both of mine, and that is DTC Spring Charm. Again, you can pick any font you would like, but remember that with the cut, it is gonna go all the way around the outside edge. So sort of like an outline. So I like a skinnier font because of that reason. And then what I also did was I changed all my one inch to one color so in this case i picked yellow it does not matter and for the half inch i have them all in black so then once i click make it the yellow will be on one mat the black will be on the other and what we're going to do is move these around to wherever our ornaments are located on the mat and again i have a whole other video about locating things correctly and even using a method to get your location more exact and i will link to that in the description below so you can review that video if you want to go over locating your designs on the mat in Cricut Design Space. Once we have those located, we'll click continue. We'll pick a cardstock setting as that is what is recommended by the manufacturer of the tool. And then we'll head to our explore and start engraving. Now that we have our design, I'm gonna use that tool in my explore machine like I talked about to do the engraving today. Now, remember that I'm gonna use it in my Explore Air 2. This tool does fit any of the Explore machines and it comes with instructions for what your settings should be for any machine you're using. I have heard of people using it in the maker, but for my maker, I use my engraving tip with my quick swap housing. And you can make the same project with that as well. Remember, if you use the off-brand tool, you always run the risk of voiding the warranty on your Cricut machine. Just wanna give you a heads up once again before we dive in and engrave in our Cricut Explorer. So we'll start by putting our strong grip transfer tape onto our strong grip mat. So what I usually do is put the transfer tape grid side down onto the mat. Then you wanna make sure it's down really, really well on the mat. And I like to use something like my briar to go over it and make sure it's down really well. Then just peel up the backing sheet, leaving the tape itself right on your mat. Then this particular blank had a protective sheet like thing on both sides and I just peeled that off. So just grab the edge and peel that off. And I peeled it off on both sides. And both of these, the stocking and the gingerbread man, already have like a little engraving. So all we're doing is adding the name, which makes it really awesome. Now, I want my name to be on this bottom portion. That's just what I've decided on. You could put it anywhere on the blank. So I'm gonna locate this bottom portion on the mat where I'll know where it is so I can locate it in design space. So this stocking I put on the two inch by two inch mark on my mat. And that mark is approximately the center of my name. So now I just have to line it up in design space in that correct location before I go to my explore to engrave. So I'm gonna repeat that same process for the rest of my stocking ornaments. Again, I want these to be down really well on the mat, so I'm gonna roll over them with the brayer and make sure they're stuck well. Now we just need to prepare our Cricut machine. So I moved the white star wheels all the way over to the right. I removed the fine point blade from the clamp. Now I picked glitter cardstock as my setting and Design Space says I need to load the fine point blade which is what it should say. So that's what you want it to say because we're gonna trick it a little bit with this engraving tool. Now, I'm gonna mention once again that this engraving tool is not made by Cricut, so it may void the warranty on your machine. But if you have an older machine and it's already out of warranty, why worry about it? And that's what's happening here in my case. So I'm just gonna drop it in to the clamp, the same clamp as you would put your blade in and close clamp B. Now you can see that the light is flashing and we're ready to load our mat. So now we'll just load our mat into the machine. Once again, I moved all of my designs around to where they are located correctly for my stockings. And now I'm gonna press the C to cut, or in this case, engrave. When it's done, do not eject it from the machine. 
you want to look and make sure you're happy with this engraving. Does it need to be deeper? If so, you would press the C button again and let the machine go over the entire project again. I'm happy with the way it looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and eject my mat and we'll take a closer look at that engraving. So there is a closer look at the engraving on these and they look amazing. So let's talk about finishing these ornaments. You might find that there's like some debris on the surface. So what I like to do is just to use this strong grip transfer tape and sort of put it on top of the ornament and lift it up. And then I'll just lift up all of those little bitty bits and pieces. And then we'll just remove each of the ornaments from the transfer tape. And so I'm just gonna repeat that for all of the ornaments. Then to finish these off, I like to add an enamel marker to my engraving. So this marker I've used several times. If you're, it's your first time using it, you may need to prime it. You just go over the engraving and I'm actually gonna go over the engraving we just did as well as what's already on these ornaments. And then I'm just gonna let that dry just a few minutes, wipe it off with a paper towel. Then once these have dried for just a few minutes, I just use a paper towel, wipe all that excess back off, and you should see black, in this case, down inside all of your engravings, and it just makes them pop a little bit more than before. So I'm just gonna repeat for all these ornaments, and then I'm gonna go ahead and engrave my other ornament just to get an idea of how that one will look as well. And there you have the cute little gingerbread ornament. Then I just added the ribbon that was in the package to attach it to the tree and my engraved ornaments are complete. So I love the way these cute little ornaments turned out. I got the location a little off, I feel like, on the gingerbread men. So I think it's like the smaller size. It was harder for me to locate in design space. So I would probably need to play with the location if I was gonna make several of those for like gifts, family and friends, that type of thing. But the larger one with the stocking, the location was really great the first time I tried it. So I know that those would work. I would say for the smaller ones, like the smaller the engraving that you're gonna do, the more of a chance you have to get it like slightly off, which makes it look way off when you actually get your project done. So for those smaller blanks and smaller names, you might need to like tweak that location quite a bit by like doing some test runs. And how I would do test runs, I have a video on that and I will link to that below. Or one you've ruined, you could just keep putting it onto your mat in different locations until you get it right and then use that location every time. So either way, but you can definitely correct and find the correct location with the Explore machine in a similar way that I did with the Maker machine in a past video. Now, if you are going to get this engraving tip and you're excited about engraving with your Cricut Explore, I would encourage you to look at our other metal engraving videos. We've done bracelets in the past, we've done metal ring dishes, and now with this tool, you can make those as well, even if you have an Explore machine. Now, if you have the Maker, you already have that engraving tip and that quick swap housing, you can 100% also make these Christmas ornaments. So be sure to pick up the supplies in the description below. Now, if this video helped you, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about engraving in general, or engraving with your Explore machine, you can ask us in the comment section below. If you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos like this every week, and trust me, you don't wanna miss any of those, because there's no telling what I might do every week. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.